In this video, we're going to be discussing what is a runaway diesel engine, as well as what causes it. Definitely something wrong with this one. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing what is a runaway diesel engine. A runaway diesel engine is where the engine speed is uncontrollable and it is higher than the set governed speed of the engine. There are many videos online and on YouTube that show UPS trucks and train engines, generators, equipment, all sorts of stuff with a runaway engine where the RPMs are way higher than they're supposed to be, usually resulting in engine fires and catastrophic damage. We'll get into the specifics of that in a little bit, but runaways are very, very bad news. And what they are is basically the engine has lost control of the ability to control the RPMs of the engine itself. So we're talking about the rotation of the crankshaft and the valve train here is going much faster than it was designed for. And this is a little different than an overspeed. Now, a runaway engine can cause an overspeed, but also overspeeds can be caused by other things, such as if you're going down a steep hill and you have a manual transmission, you put it in too low of a gear, that can cause the RPMs to mechanically climb higher than the engine is governed at. Now, this is not a runaway. There is a difference. Like I said, runaways can be causes of overspeeds, but overspeeds are not necessarily always caused by a runaway. Now, Let's talk about what causes a runaway diesel engine. Now for a caveat here, I've never been around a diesel engine that is running away. I have been on sites and seen the aftermath of engines that have ran away. I've seen the aftermath of engines that have oversped, and it's not pretty. They are not as common as they used to be, and we're gonna talk about that in this video. And what we're gonna be talking about in this portion is what causes a diesel engine to run away. On run, Most of the engines that are gonna run away or have run away in the past are mechanical. So they have a mechanical fuel pump that is not controlled by an ECM. These are controlled basically by something called the rack. And the rack is inside of the fuel pump. I will show you 3406B rack inside of the fuel pump here. So you're looking at a cat mechanical fuel pump here. And what the little rod I'm trying to pull out here is the rack itself. The rack controls the amount of fuel that goes to each of the nozzles and it controls the plungers here through a scroll system. And you can't really see it without totally dissembling this pump. You can see the front of it though. I'll move it and you can see it move. And it should move freely just like this. Now what that rack does is your throttle input is connected usually through some counterweights and springs to this rack. And the rack sets the fuel limit to each injector. And remember, diesel engines are compression ignition engines. That means they do not require spark. So no spark plug, no distributor. So if let's say that engine's running at 1500 RPM, but for whatever reason, it goes to full rack. So full fuel on, foot to the floor. It should go to a governed speed and at this point, the engineering of the fuel pump should keep it below that governed speed. Now, let's say the rack does not go to that governed speed and stop. Let's say it just goes full fuel and you're just sitting in a parking lot. It's going to increase the speed of that engine in RPM sense to whatever that engine wants to go to mechanically. And that's going to be way past that governed speed. If Let's say for a Cat 3406B, it might be governed at 2100 RPM. It might go to 3,000 or 3,200, 3,500. Stuff's going to start coming apart at that point. And this is really the reason that most of the runaways are going to be on the older mechanicals. Now, they can also occur on newer engines, common rails, Huey system, electronic unit injectors, but it's less common. And it can also be caused not by fuel, but by oil. Because remember, all you need on a diesel, you already have compression. There's nothing you can do to take the compression away, for the most part, on a diesel engine. So... If you add fuel, whether that's diesel or another petroleum byproduct, oil, which can also ignite under high compression and high temperatures, that can also cause a runaway. I had a truck on a newer common rail engine, and it had a turbo failure and it was dumping oil into the intake. Now, it didn't run away on me, but I couldn't shut it off because it was sucking oil into the intake, 
and it was compression igniting it. And what I had to do was pull the intake tube off and put a little book or a notebook over the intake to remove air from the equation, okay? So what exactly type of damage can be caused by overspeeding your engine? You can have valve to piston contact. You can have bent push rods, broken rocker arms, damaged pistons, damaged liners. You can throw a rod out of the side of the block, cause an engine fire, cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. Basically, it's really bad for your engine. You really want to avoid it at all costs. That governed speed is in that engine for a reason. Diesel engines, for the most part, are not high revving engines. They use extremely heavy components. Most of the pistons are forged steel. They use heavy valve train components, heavy valves, heavy loaded valve springs. They're not made for high RPM. So when you start increasing that RPM, you're really stressing these parts. And for the most part, it's mostly the valve train parts because the valve springs aren't made for quickly opening and closing similar maybe a, a car engine which can redline at seven eight thousand rpm sometimes so the faster you turn that crankshaft the faster the piston speed is going up and down not only that the pistons are usually much heavier to do with the increased loads of boosted engines on a diesel engine so as you increase your rpm you're increasing the piston speed which can damage the piston because your piston mile per hour is heavily influenced or directly influenced by the rpm of the engine now usually the piston doesn't fail first usually you have valve contact or valve spring damage so as that valve train increases in rpms if it gets too high usually the valve springs can't keep up with the piston speed so you might and usually do have piston to valve contact which at this point will typically damage the piston and the valve. Now, once the valve is not seating properly because it's contacted the piston, you can start sucking oil into the engine. You can start having piston contact with the liners. You can drop a valve right into the cylinder. This can cause damage to the crankshaft. It can cause a thrown connecting rod out to the side of the block. You can damage the rocker arms pretty much all the mechanical components, the gear train can be damaged by an overspeed of this engine. So you really want to avoid them if you can. Now, the next part we're going to be talking about is what you can do to avoid it. And if it is going on or you have an engine that will not shut off, but isn't necessarily overspeeding, how you can shut it off. Now, there's not a lot you can do to avoid an overspeed. Usually it happens because you've had a mechanical failure that you didn't know happened or you didn't plan for, obviously and it's running away on you. Sometimes you might notice, let's say that if you have an older mechanical engine and you shut the key off, it might keep running. Or if the throttle pedal is non-responsive or it delays, or after you let off the throttle, it tends to stay at high RPMs. Any of these issues need to be resolved quickly, as soon as possible, because they could potentially lead, especially if you have one that's non-responsive with throttle input or slow to decrease in rpm that could mean your rack's starting to stick or something's wrong with the counterweights in the fuel pump itself so you might want to have that looked at now i've had many engines that won't shut off but are just at idle um obviously the first thing to do if you don't have one that you know is not decreasing in rpm or is starting to run away and you just turn the key off most engines that have a mechanical fuel pump are going to have something called a fuel shutoff solenoid. And this fuel shutoff solenoid, if you turn the key off, is supposed to energize or de-energize depending on the system, and it should force the rack to a closed position. Now, if that doesn't work and it's starting to run away on you, it's pretty scary. Um, that engine could start throwing parts out of the side, cause an engine fire, all sorts of stuff. So you really, for safety reasons, you don't want to be around it. But if that's your truck, you're probably gonna try and shut it off. So a couple things you could do to prevent it from doing this or try to stop it is you have to remove either the air or the fuel. Now, the ones that get stuck at idle, like let's say you turn the key off and they're just idling, you can usually stall them out, just put them in gear and engage the clutch slowly and they'll usually stall out on you. But if it's running away, it's making too much power usually to stall it out, you'll probably blow something up in the drive shaft 
or the transmission or the differential and it'll still be running away on you so you have to remove like i said the fuel or the air so most fuel systems don't have ball valves but if you did have a ball valve somewhere on let's say a filter housing that you could close quickly it might not stop the runaway immediately because there's still fuel in your fuel lines there's still fuel in the transfer pump and the pump itself so that might not stop it immediately but that's going to prevent it from running away for very long the other thing is i've seen guys knocking off the fuel filters stuff like that that's basically doing the same thing once you remove the fuel it should shut off now if it's an oil situation you're gonna to have to stop air from getting in that engine now some of the old engines would have something called an air damper it was basically like a throttle plate that if they were to overspeed it could close and restrict the air once you remove the air it's going to stop now let's say it's easier to pull an intake tube off or cut it open you have to force it's going to be sucking a lot of air and so you have to force something to keep air from getting into the cylinder head so a clipboard a book something like that i've heard of guys sticking fire extinguishers in there i don't know if that would work um you could try it obviously but you know remember this is a very dangerous situation so um not a lot you can do once they start running away on you outside of trying to stop the airflow or like i said trying to shut off the fuel to that engine if it's an oil fired one there's nothing you can do outside of stopping the air because remember there's no spark plug you cannot remove the spark from these engines they're compression ignition they're fairly dumb they just build pressure and fire that's what they do okay that's my video on what a runaway diesel engine is i hope you enjoyed it now it's time for a little segment i like to call This air compressor looked like it ran away, but no, it just seized up and threw the rod out of the side of the case. This was on a cement truck, and pretty unfortunate because not only did it damage the air compressor here, but it damaged the gear drive, which is not very good. You can see broken teeth there. There's broken teeth throughout this engine. Not only that, there's a ton of metal in the oil pan and the front structure. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big repair. Thanks for watching the video.